Drama. Second Timothy, that was our scripture from when we opened up, says, have nothing to do with or avoiding. Avoiding. Have nothing to do with or avoid. Stay away from quarreling. That was Second Timothy. Stated it simple. Get away from it. I gave you some specifics what psychologists say. Unmanaged emotions. That's what they believe. That's the reason why. That's why you like conflict, you like drama. Because you have unmanaged emotions. There's some things that you haven't dealt with. That's why. All or nothing thinking, blaming others, extreme behaviors, learned behaviors. And then I took you to the book of Proverbs and kind of gave you what the book of Proverbs says. Angry, greedy, perverse, hot tempered. He lists all these different things. That's a big one yet. And I'm trying to make a connection between the feeling of what this drama is and being able to train yourself to deflect it, to be able to get yourself to understand that is not the value that God wants to see in us. That is not who he wants us to be. And it's oh so easy to feel it. Book of James says, he was asking the 12 tribes. He sent out letters to them, and he was asking them a very simple question. But what I tell you, in each of these letters, he's addressing the church. He's addressing adults. He's addressing people who are mature in Christianity or immature, depending on the disciples. Not ready. They profess one thing, but they show a different thing. They say, Jesus, 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 but they act this other kind of way. And James was asking the question. What is the source of quarrels and conflict among you? That was his question. What reason do you have to argue? To bicker? To fight? What is it? And he responded. So he asked the question and he responded. The source is selfishness. Arrogance. Here's the word. Pride. Pride. Let me tell you what the Bible says about pride. It says that pride is at the root of all disobedience. If you go against. Pride is at the root of all disobedience. I need you to understand this. And it also talks about relational conflict. And here's what the Bible says. You have to know that God opposes the proud. Because this is how quickly the drama can come into your life. See, it doesn't require very much for someone to instigate something within you to make you feel uncomfortable. Make you feel like it's not good enough. Like, oh, you a lie. I'm gonna... So I want to give you some components. Just like we train the llama, you have to be really quickly to be able to identify what needs to happen next. The first thing, this is it. This is real simple. Principles of the Bible, you can apply them in any part of your life and it works. Here's the first one. You have to submit to God unconditionally. No matter what you think, no matter what you feel, you have to submit. Let me explain something to you. In the Bible, there's many writings that talk about submitting. I mean, he's really big on submission. Because he talks about government officials submitting. Submitting. Doesn't say you have to agree. He says submit. <laughs> Leaders, people in capacity, submit. He said it. I didn't say it. He said it. Talks about elders of the church. The Bible says to submit. It talks about husbands submitting. It talks about wives submitting. Submit. There is importance behind the idea of submitting. 
So for us to have to submit to God unconditionally, that's a step that maybe gets a little difficult. See, because we often think that we're right. I mean, we blew the roof off the place. We have to be right. I mean, there's no way those judges could have possibly, maybe their hearing aids were off. Maybe they got crossed up or something. See our own righteousness, right, right, we believe it's us. It's not good enough. It's not. Pride is the biggest hindrance. And we fall short. We fall short. We think things should be a certain way. This is the way I expect it to be. We expected the results to come out in our favor. And it didn't. Can't separate submitting to God, trusting God, and having our own idea of what it should be. So the first thing is submit to God unconditionally. Number two, Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. See, you can't be angry. You can't be upset. You can't be bitter. You can't be frustrated. Hey, hey, come here. Where's the Come here. I know you're not expecting this. See, because if I'm angry, if I'm bitter, I'm really... P.O.'d at her, like, oh, uh, you know, that's in my chicken sandwich, I got an issue right now, right? There's no way that I could possibly draw close and have bitterness and ugliness and anything else. Will you hug me? <laughs> <laughs> the idea is when you draw close, he draws close to you. Now, I'm giving you this perspective here because it doesn't happen. I can't be angry with her and give her the fullness of drawing close. I can't have in my focus, in my vision, anger about anything and expect to be close to God. Well, I really can't say this, but Jesus, I love you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so submit to God unconditionally. Draw near to God. He will draw near to you. We know that at the root of disobedience is that pride factor. Sometimes it's hard to dismiss it. These next three things go together. You gotta humble yourself. You gotta humble yourself. What does that mean? You say, I'm sorry. You say, forgive me, or you forgive them. You realize that God has more. That there was a reason why it happened the way it happened. Matthew, the book of Matthew, verse 5, chapter 5, verse 23 says, Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, I want you to understand this because Jesus was speaking directly to them. And he was trying to make it perfectly clear that, you know, just because you praise and, 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 and we, we do certain things. If you have bitterness in your heart, if you have resentment in your heart, if you're holding some things back, if you're hanging on to that because you prefer the drama, the conflict, he's going to give you the remedy to fix it. You bring your gift to the altar. And there, you remember that your brother has something against you. I thought that was very interesting that he was talking about somebody else. Not that you have something against him, but you remember that your brother, that somebody else who harmed you, who did wrong to you, who said something bad to you, who did something ugly to you, who put something on social media that was not true. Your brother has something against you. He says, leave your gift. Before you go to the altar and go your way, first be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. 
It's all about humbling yourself. It's all about forgiveness. He was talking about removing the bitterness, the anger, that thorn that's in your side. Because you know what? There's a reality. You're going to face it. You're going to see it. You're going to come across it. People are going to say things. People are going to do things. You're going to feel betrayed. You're going to feel like maybe it was unexpected. You don't feel like you got hit in the gut sometimes. And yes, sometimes it may be hard to deal with. That's when you got to go back. You really got to be able to focus and say, God, what I'm feeling right now, what I have in my heart, is this okay? That's you starting to submit to God. That's you starting to draw closer to him because now I'm no longer focused on what the dilemma is. Now I'm looking at him. Lord, I, I need you to help me deal with this right here, right now. For God, whatever I have to do to remove this anger, this resentment, this pain, this hurt, this heartache, this bitterness, whatever's in my heart, I don't need it to be there. I don't want to have the drama. I don't want to have the conflict. I don't want to feel that resistance in my heart. I don't want to live a life that's filled with bitterness and anger. I tell you what, there's a lot of older people they could use this message because they live life contaminated by bitterness, by anger, by resentment. I didn't get the job. Oh, they suck. They're horrible. They're nasty people. I can't stand them. There's this, that. I didn't get the promotion. Oh. Life is going to be filled with many opportunities to be, for people to dictate into your life question is will you be strong enough to keep the drama at bay to decide in your heart that you don't want to have any part of it to go back to what Timothy said have nothing to do to avoid quarreling young people this is a message for you to start looking inwardly at yourself when you come to conflict, when you come to that passage, that, that bridge that's right there, what will you choose? Will you engage with it? Will you entertain that emotion? Or will you submit? Will you humble yourself? Will you draw near to God? Will you forgive? 